Uh, Paul, a varied week. Gretna, Workington, must have been a good week getting ready for a tough game. Yeah, yeah, it's been a good week in terms of the training. Um, good week. Um, Tuesday, I've got to say, was a firstly disappointing to lose the game. Um, deservedly so as well. We did deserve to lose it. But on the plus side of it, we got Ben Barkley 60 minutes, Ryan Edmondson 60 minutes, Josh Dixon, brilliant to see him back with what he's been through. Um, minutes under the belt for Jaden and Jack Robinson and Mick Kelly, um, which is needed, um, you know, and that's reflected in their performance as well. Um, so some really good things, um, but obviously we're out of the Cumberland Cup and we just have to wish Workington good luck in, in the next round. Did all the, of the lads come through that? I'm thinking particularly the likes of Edmo Barkley and Dixon who've been carrying injuries. Yeah, no problems at all. They've uh, they've joined in training. Um, Lads who played the full 90 have just done a recovery, but the rest did, did the full session. Um, so we've just got to build their fitness up now. I've got a decision to make as to whether they come into the group for the weekend away at Swindon or whether we just keep building up. We're going to um, have a, hopefully have a game next week for them to get more minutes, and, and that's that'll be the whole group who are not starting. They'll be getting minutes. Um, so we've just got to try and keep everybody right. The challenge for, for me and the rest of the staff now is to get as many players available for this running to the end of the season and then make the right choices. And there was a moment for Dicko when he's running along shoulder to shoulder, battling for the ball for a prolonged spell, and you're thinking, they're the moments, that will give him confidence. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, he's, he's been doing that in training um, over the last few weeks. I don't know how many weeks he's done. He's done a full training, but he's done proper full contact training and he's not shirked anything. He's got stuck into to challenges and... He's fallen over and people have fallen on top of him and all the things that go with normal match day stuff. Um, and he's been fine with it. So he's just got to keep building up that level of fitness now. He'll get some more minutes next week and then we'll, we'll just see how he goes with him. And Joel Senior, is he over that illness that mm. kept him out last week? Yeah, Joel is, yeah. I mean, he was, he, he was OK to be involved last week, but I just felt as though the fact that he hadn't eaten properly for probably 24, 36 hours wasn't going to do him any good um, and I wanted to be a real I wanted it to be high energy and real front foot about the way we started the game in particular um, and I just felt as though we'd be better going the way that we did um, but he's trained all week he's fine um, he's in the squad for the weekend and then we'll, we'll see what we do from there. Edmo's goal I thought it was a great goal the other night Harvey's ball down the line uh, Mason's flick and then a great finish for, from Ryan and he celebrates like it's an FA Cup goal yeah. what does that mean for a player like that? Well he's had a tough time you know he's gone through surgery he's worked extremely hard and what I would say about Edmo that the first time I spoke to him after surgery and I said right that's it now then eight to ten weeks let's get you back out there and he went no I'll be back before eight to ten weeks he said I'm, I'm a good healer I'm going to work really hard and be fit enough um, and I thought he showed that I think he probably could have played more but I just didn't want to push my luck with him and Ben um, and it was really a case of I, I did actually look at it and thought if we're not ahead we're going to lose two big personalities out of the group there and we're going to give ourselves a problem without being disrespectful to the Cumberland Cup I've got bigger fish to, to fry over the next 12 games and I wanted to make sure that these lads don't get pushed too much um, that, that's detrimental to their levels of fitness that affects them for us for the, the last few parts of this season. So that was the decision I made and I stuck with it during, as the game went on. And um, unfortunately we did lose the game, but th those two have come through it unscathed. Another great positive from a night like that is that the second years in particular who get involved and you can take a look at, because it's an important little period for those boys. Well, they have to. Uh, they've got to be able to show us whether they're, they're capable of, uh, of coping. Um, you know, so it, it was a test for them and it gives me an opportunity to look at them and um, they'll find out over the next few months what's going to happen. Bigger fish to fry, it's Swindon at the weekend, always a tough place to go. Yeah, it is a real tough place. I mean, I remember my days at Oxford, that was our local derby against Swindon and it was always a real hostile atmosphere. Tough place to go and I think they're a really good football inside. Probably one of the best football insides in the league, if I'm going to be honest with you. They've got a manager who's gone in who's got great experience as a player and also with his, his roles as an assistant with Frank Lampard. Um, he will have them trying to play football. They want to do it the right way. The truth is we've just got to go and do what we need to do. We've gone to places who want to play football. We've gone to places who want to be direct and who want to be physical. Whatever this weekend throws at us in, in terms of what Swindon do, 
we've got to make sure we're right because this is a really really good opportunity it's the next one for us to really cement our place in those top uh, top places in the league another of these teams with games in hand and they'll know if they do that right that they'll be almost there and in the mix again so there's something for them to go for no, of course there is they've got a chance they, they've got a chance of being involved in it um and they'll look at this game as, as being a one that they, they want to get three points they're at home um it's going to be a challenge i know they've had they've had some injury troubles um I don't know where they're at with it, but I keep saying this and it sounds a bit like Groundhog Day, it's about us, it's about how we go about it, you know, we, we are second in the table for a reason and um, if we go and do it properly, like we have done over the last three games, then we can make it four wins on the bounce. And their story is pretty much lead to, isn't it, three defeats in a row, then they've got two two wins and a draw and all of a sudden they've got a bit of momentum again, you just never know what you're going to get. No you don't, um, and, and results against good teams, you know, to get a draw at, uh, at the league leaders, to beat Salford, um, they get a, an emphatic win against Harrogate, so yeah, they're, they're going to be a tough side for us. Um, I also think they'll be looking at us thinking it's going to be a tough game for them and we've got to go with the, not with an arrogance but we've got to go with a belief and a swagger of a team that's second in the table and go and put on a performance that, that makes it a real difficult afternoon for Swindon. Our three in a row is down to that isn't it, that belief, that swagger, not arrogance but that belief going out there we can do it. Yeah there, there is and, and I've got to say that their attitude towards training has been really good this week as well, there's no... We've had weeks where we get a really good result or a couple of good results and they come off it a little bit. They haven't been like that this week. They've been they've been right, they've, they've gone about the business properly. We've had a real good session up at Gretna today because the, the training pitch is frozen, um, but they've gone about it in a really positive way. And we have to make sure that Friday's good and it's light and we get the journey right. And then we need a, a full, high energy, strong positive performance come Saturday at three o'clock. We've asked a number of times can they handle the, the nervy, the edgy side of being where they are in the league table. That second half, I mean you used the word professional, solid, everything that goes with doing it right, it's there. Does that suggest that they are handling the nerves that go with this? Well all I can say is that they did it right last weekend. But but you judged every game, you know, they, they, they we'll all get judged on Saturday afternoon and and um, we just have to keep doing it. We've done it right for for this first part of the season. Um, my my hope and my wish is that they carry it on. I want them to keep showing it because they're good people, they're good characters, they want the right things, they, they're saying all the right things, they're doing the right things day to day in training. Now we have to go and do it right again on Saturday. We put that one to bed, we chalk it off the fixture list and get ready for the next one. It is a great run of games coming, isn't it? I mean, Gibbo used a, a phrase this morning when we spoke to him. He said, if you want to be the best, you've got to beat the best. Yeah. It's a fact, isn't it? No, no, without a doubt. And uh, if, if we are going to achieve anything this season, we're going to have to beat all the teams at the top of the table. And that's who we've got. You know, you look at the fixture list with, with Orion, with Stevenage, Northampton, Barrow, uh, Stockport, Salford. You know, there's some good games, some really good games. And if we are good enough, then we'll be fine. If we're not, we'll take it on the chin and we have to deal with that. And again, something you've repeated, how can we not enjoy this with the situation that we're in? Yeah, we've got to. We've got to enjoy it. And I think that's what I think that's what I'm probably feeling from the players this week, that they are enjoying it. I know they enjoyed the, the dressing room at the end of the game last weekend, um, even though I'm always put a dampener on it by saying we need to do this better but they've enjoyed that we've had a good week of training and um, they know what the plan is for next week as well so we go and do it right on Saturday and then we can start getting prepared for the week after and they've shown us they know what to do to make it four in a row that must be fresh in the memory as well yeah they, they do know um, they they're doing things um, whatever it takes really sometimes it's scrappy and it's gritty and it's professional like it was in the second half that 15 minute spell before half time where we got the ball down and we played and we, we switched the play and we got crosses in and we got balls into the box it's whatever it takes and that's what they're, they're learning they're, they're developing that and the experienced players are helping the younger ones and long may that continue You've talked again, I feel like I'm repeating myself with the repeating things you've said but trusting players, you bring Gibbo in he does what he does, you bring Corey on he does what he does. What's that like for you to have that, where you know you can pick any one of them and they're going to do something? Well, it certainly makes my life easier. That, that's that's one thing I'd say. I've been in many situations where you don't know what you're going to get. Um, so it, it makes our life as staff so much easier. Um, I have Gav, 
who comes and says have you considered doing this would you do that and never a stupid suggestion because we trust all the players to to come on and do their job so they've got to keep it going i'm going to keep saying it because we have not achieved anything yet you know i'm i'm not i'm not worrying about what's below us what what who's chasing us I'm looking and working out how we can actually catch the one team above us. And if we keep doing our job properly, we have a chance of doing that because I'm a big believer that if you do your side of it right, the rest will take care of itself. So let's go to Swindon. Let's make sure we're totally professional. Uh, we're res respectful of what they are, but go and be ruthless in how we go about it. Mention Corey there. We were all worried about Hunt. How is, how is he with his going? Yeah, he's fine. Um, he's trained today. Um, we've nursed him through the week and he's OK. Um, he did a, a run yesterday on his own and he's trained today, so he, he will be fine for the weekend, barring something happening between now and Saturday afternoon. I know you would like more in that pool of players to choose from, but even right now, thinking about Corey and Hunts, you think about Gibbo and Joel, there's some real poses for you this weekend. Yeah, no, no, some nice issues to have. Yeah, it is. Um, and as I say, uh, with Ben Barkley getting 60 minutes under his belt and Ben's not been out as long as Edmo. He's been, had a real stop-start time of it. But he comes into our thinking. Ryan Edmondson comes into our thinking. Jamie Devitt is in full training and he'll get minutes next week, so he'll come back into the mix after that. Um, Taylor Charters has started to run out on the grass again and we're just waiting to get the OK from his surgeon. He had a scan on Wednesday, which has come back really positive, but we need the OK from the surgeon for him to to step up his next stage so hopefully middle of April he should be back into it uh, Finn back is doing really really well with his rehab down at Forest uh, we're hoping we're hoping that he's going to be involved in the 11 v 11 at Forest the week of the 20th of March and then he'll come back into us then so we're gonna have even more nice dilemmas to have and I'm looking forward to that 419 so far what we on th Thursday afternoon that's not bad is it oh wow it's incredible because it's another long old jaunt down there isn't it so fair play to them They're absolutely brilliant and I know they'll back us so I've got no doubts about that and uh, we've got to make sure that we put on a performance that keeps them happy makes their journey home a real good one and then we then get a home game where we're asking them to come out and make it make it a really difficult place by supporting us don't get involved with with what Stevenage want to do and what their dugout want to do. Support us, come and support the players, make some noise for us and make it a really good place for us to play and a horrible place for the opposition to play. Fan groups, the local paper, there's all little campaigns that are starting to build. We're getting on board as the club, we're just starting to push, let's get down here, let's see this final 12 games through. It's lovely to see that, isn't it? Oh, it's brilliant. It's what I wanted when I came back in. Um, when I came back in February, I, I could tell you could just sense there was a real disconnect with the with everybody, with those different factions of the club all going about their own way. The supporters weren't on board. There was lots of criticism coming around. We've now got a real united football club, um, and we've got to do everything we possibly can to embrace it, to keep it and um, keep building ourselves to be an even better football club moving forward. And that's what we do, do it, but if, if, if it doesn't happen, at least we've all been together and trying to push for the same end. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's no point worrying about it, will it or won't it at the moment. There's too many things that can happen, there's too many permutations. This has been a brilliant like, comeback from, from where we were. Um, and whatever happens between now and the end of the season, we have to all stick together. We've got to make sure we keep being, being in a better place than we were last February. Um, it wasn't pleasant for anybody. I don't think anybody really wanted to come and spend their hard-earned money to come and abuse people in, on the terraces. It's much better to come and support and to, and to get a good feeling about it. We all know what a difference it makes in the city when the team are winning and doing well. And that's what I like to, I like to hear that. And I liked, I'd like it to continue for a long, long time. Oh, brilliant. Thanks.